what's good welcome back to the loophole channel now i know it's been a while since the last video but for good reason um, we've been developing a lot of things at loophole recently over the past few months one of which is releasing in the next few days which is the new big expansion to my sonic sound design course it's got over a hundred video tutorials now and it's going to take you from absolute beginner to advanced in everything sound design related i'm going to leave two links in the description of this video the first one's going to be a link to download three free videos from the course so you can play around with some of the ideas that we will be working on in the course and then the second is going to be a link to sign up to get an alert when I drop the course so you can get a discount when it does release. But anyway, getting into this video, I'm going to show you the basics of how to recreate any synth sound that you hear in a song in your own door and then use it in your own music, essentially. I'm going to use pigments to show you how to do it. You've got a very, very simple layout and you can figure out where everything is going thanks to how it shows it visually. Any subtractive synthesizer like this, for example, will have three main sections. First section is the oscillator. The next section is the filter. And then the final section is the amplifier in order for you to hear what you've done in the synth. In an analog synth, you generally got four waves to work with. You've got a sine wave, which is this. Very smooth sound. Using a lot of modern R&B. The next stage up in terms of brightness is a triangle wave, which looks and sounds like this. A little bit brighter, but still quite nice on the ears. And then you jump to two very, very bright waves, which is what, to be honest, the majority of synth sounds are made with. First is a sawtooth wave. Immediately you can hear that's very, very bright. And then a pulse wave. Sounds a bit like a video game. I'll come to that in a second though. And then you've got filters, which sculpt out from the sound in terms of removing the high frequencies. So the lower I bring this cutoff down, the more high frequencies are gonna be removed. And then finally you've got your amplifier and your amplifier envelope, which in pigments is located down here, which is how you translate how the volume moves over time. So let's say we want the sound to fade in. What we need to pull up is the attack here. So instead of the attack coming in very quickly like this, it's gonna fade in instead of coming in instantly. Let's pull it up to a second. So it's gonna take a second to go from silence to its loudest point. The opposite is with release. So the release time is the time it takes to get from sound to silence. So let's pull this one up to a second as well. When I let go of the key, it's gonna take a second for the sound to completely die out. Now we've got two other points, which are decay and sustain. The sustain level is the level that it goes to after it reaches this attack stage. So you can see if I pull this up, it goes from this point to this point. I can drag this down and you can see the sustain level goes down. So let's say we want the sustain level at about 50%, which is gonna be half as loud as the maximum point. It's gonna go from nothing up to the maximum, then down to 50% now it's half as loud as it was before. If I pull the sustain up to full, it's gonna double in how loud it is. Now, the time it takes to get from this point to this point is the decay time. So let's pull this up to maybe a second and a half. Took a second and a half to get from this point to this point. Now that's the basics of ADSR is covered. If you want a more in-depth description, of course, all of this is covered in the course. Now there are two other core elements to subtractive synthesis. The first is modulation, which is basically just movement and the second is effects. We can apply this movement here from this envelope to the cutoff if we wanted to. So I'm gonna press this plus button here. Let's pull up envelope VCA. What we're gonna see is this filter cutoff moving up and dropping down in accordance with this. So it's gonna get brighter over time and then filter out. We can also modulate the cutoff using an LFO, which is a low frequency oscillator, which is gonna move it back and forth between two points. So I'm gonna pull this up in LFO one and you can see already visually what it's doing. It's moving up and down getting more and less filtered as this LFO moves, so. Could speed it up if I wanted to. Great, so that's the basics of a synth. Now the first sound that I wanna recreate is the main sound from N95, which is the new single from Kendrick Lamar's album that's just dropped as I'm recording this video. Take off your idols. Take off the runway, take off the Cairo. I've got the MIDI pulled up here, so with a basic sine wave, the MIDI sounds like this. It sounds kind of like a brass instrument. I, they might have even added some trumpets or horns in there. One thing that I've learned is that there are two very distinctive types of waves that have a very distinctive sound to them. Sawtooth waves sound like brass instruments if you filter them out and then add uh, an envelope to them. Fade it up a little bit. 
drop it down so then we get this sound so you can see that sounds a bit like a brass instrument obviously it doesn't sound exactly like it but it represents it a little bit and then pulse waves just sound like retro video games like 8-bit type video game sounds so I said it sounded like horns, so I want to go for a sawtooth wave, but I want it to sound quite big, so I want it to sound like there are lots of layered sounds together. So I'm going to select three different sawtooth waves and layer them. I'm going to pull down the filter cut off a little bit, and let's turn the volume up with these two. So right now we're getting a kind of phasing effect. When I'm designing sounds, I quite like to think of real world kind of implications of certain sounds and how I would replicate them within the synth. So when you've got a group of horns, for example, not all of them are gonna be perfectly in tune. So what I wanna do is detune some of them, pull up the fine tune, make sure they're all kind of not quite in tune and then it sounds like this which sounds a bit like a chorus effect. I can pull in some unison to make that effect even more. Yeah, maybe not that much. And let's start to play around with the filter like we would do for a brass instrument. So let's pull this up and let's pull up envelope two. So let's hear how that sounds with the MIDI. So I think what I want to do is just pull the attack a bit shorter because it didn't fade in that slowly. Pull up the release of the main sound. So we're getting a longer tail after the sound stops. Then I think what's happened is they've layered a very harsh sawtooth wave underneath. Let's play around with that. And let's feed this into an empty filter space instead of it being filtered. So let's pull it into filter two, which is empty or bypassed as it says here. It sounds like this. And then I think I want to do a similar thing as I did with that one. So let's layer the two and you see how that sounds. So if I'm being honest, I think we're pretty much there. I think we just want to add some effects. So maybe a chorus to make it a bit wider. And then add a bit of a reverb. So that's the introduction into trying to recreate a synth sound that was quite easy because it was literally just a sawtooth wave that's been filtered out a little bit. I think I want to bring in another sound from another album that I've been listening to a lot. So I'm just going to look for one now. One album that I've not stopped listening to since it came out and I think it was March is Rosalia's album Motomami. It's really, really diverse sonically and it's got some proper standout songs. The song that I'm going to look at in this video is one of the closing tracks. The main sound I'm going to look at in this video, it sounds like a low string sound, maybe a cello or a double bass. Uh, it's definitely been processed and it's going to be hard to try and replicate that in just a regular synth, but we're going to have a go at it. So I know for a lot of synth string sounds, people like to use pulse waves and vary the pulse width. Now I haven't covered pulse width specifically in this video, but there are lots of videos online if you want to have a look at it, or of course in the course I cover it really extensively. But when you vary the pulse width and filter it out a little bit, you can start to get not a realistic sound, but at least more like a string sound than any of the other waves that we're using here. So. Especially when you start to layer it with other sounds. So what I'm gonna do is have a sawtooth wave as the main sound and then layer two pulse waves um, and vary the pulse width using LFOs. So I'm gonna slow this LFO down, I think, and then apply it to the first one and start to move it like here. And then let's have LFO2 moving, not as slow. Let's apply it to this one here. So we're getting this sound right now. Let's fade it in a bit. So that's the string-ish sound that we're working with. And then we're gonna give a bass with a sawtooth wave. Now, obviously it sounds quite low down, so I'm gonna pitch this down an octave and it's just playing one note at a time. So I'm gonna pull this into a monophonic synth as opposed to a polyphonic synth and legato, which means that we're kind of moving and gliding from note to note as opposed to jumping from note to note. So I want there to be some glide. So we're getting this sound. 
I think I want there to be some detune as well, just so we're getting this kind of chorus effect and maybe actually pitch this up an octave so we're getting multiple layers to the sound. Okay, that's already sounding a lot more like what we want it to. I'm gonna pull up the resonance a bit, maybe drop the cut off. I'm gonna play it with the MIDI. Okay, I don't like how this is gliding, so I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. I think to give it a bit of a thicker sound, I wanna pull in some unison, maybe don't detune it as much, and then maybe bring in a second filter. A little bit higher, and maybe fade some of it straight into filter two instead of going into just filter one. and some keyboard control. And I think that's all I wanna do with this, maybe pull up the drift a little bit. But let's move to effects now because obviously the sound is heavily, heavily processed. So I think for the effects, maybe I wanna add distortion first of all, just to bring out some of the highs again. Then I wanna give it a bit more of a chorus feel. And it definitely needs a heavy reverb. I think finally, I wanna add some EQs to the sound. So let's pull up an EQ here. And I really wanna boost some mids and lower mids and cut the highs. So I think let's increase this here. Do a similar thing with this one. I think what I do want to do is layer it with a sample within pigments. So I don't really like the samples usually, but I think let's bring in a cello sample and see how that adds to the sound. And then bring it an octave up. So there you go, there's an introduction in how to recreate sounds that you hear in songs within a synth. Of course, it's not an exact replica of the sound, but it's an extremely useful skill to learn if you wanna bring a certain vibe that you recognize in a song to a track that you're making or a sample that you're making. So hopefully that was a good introduction that was useful. If it was useful, it would be amazing if you could leave a like on the video, comment down below on what you wanna see in the next video. We're gonna keep the uploads coming more consistently now. Uh, so if you wanna see something specific in another video, please let me know. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell and I will see you in the next one.